In Mexico, the members of the Commission for Access to the Truth, Historical Clarification and Promotion of Justice for Serious Human Rights Violations are set to arrive in Guerrero. In Turkey, President Erdogan leads the presidential race with more than 99% of the votes counted and his People's Alliance secure an absolute majority in the nation's parliament. And thousands of Palestinians mark May 15th at the 75th anniversary of Nakba of 1948, when nearly 700,000 indigenous Palestinians were ethnically cleansed from their homes by Zionist militias. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Lesu Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. The members of the Commission for Access to the Truth, Historical Clarification and Promotion of Justice for Serious Human Rights Violations between 1965 and 1990 will arrive in Guerrero in a few weeks. In that state, the remains of those executed in 1971 will be exhumed. The relatives of the victims of former President Luis Echeverria Alvarez and his military junta are filing a complaint. During their intervention in an assembly summoned by the Union of Forestry and Agricultural Agents of Guerrero, in which they recalled the tortures, humiliations, and violations to which their relatives were subjected to, and the consequences of these events, they reiterated their right to demand justice and reparation. In Mexico, 26 people died in a traffic accident on Sunday on the Zaragoza Victoria Highway in the state of Tamaulipas. The accident occurred when a trailer and a private van adapted for passengers' transport collided. Officials from the Attorney General's office say the death toll could rise. Therefore, local authorities have not yet confirmed a definitive number of fatalities among the deceased. There are men, women, and children who have not yet been identified due to the severity of the damage caused by the fire that erupted after the accident. The Colombian and Venezuelan foreign ministries began coordinating efforts to recover the bodies of hundreds of Colombian citizens murdered by paramilitaries. In a statement, the head of the Colombian diplomacy, Alvaro Leiva, said his office had agreed with his Venezuelan counterpart, Ivan Hill, to provide prompt and effective institutional mechanisms to locate the remains of the victims buried in Venezuelan territory, as recently indicated by the former commander of the paramilitary group, Salvatore Mancuso. During his appearance before the Special Jurisdiction for Peace, although Mancuso speaks of 200 bodies, the Colombian Foreign Minister assured that there are more. It is something that really moves people. It distressed me very deeply because it was being somewhat forgotten there. I have been involved in the process for many years. I was never a high commissioner. I always did it on my own. And on that occasion, I decided to come the rumor was known. It was there in people's mind, in the whole community, and I decided to come. And indeed, it could be verified. And today we confirm it through Mr. Mancuso's testimony. And I think it is an impressive, especially that this is not the only crematorium. Ecuador's parliament met on Sunday to renew its leadership. The new board of directors will govern the remaining two years of its current legislature. This process of term renewal in the National Assembly takes place amidst the call for an impeachment trial against Guillermo Lasso for corruption. The parliamentary body say that legislators must appoint the first and second vice presidents, as well as four members of the Legislative Administration Council, responsible for planning legislative activities and establishing priorities for dealing with legal bills. They will also appoint the Secretary General and the Pro Secretary and swear in the new members of the Council of Citizens' Participation and Social Control, elected by popular vote last February. The Brazilian government will relaunch agrarian reform programs aimed at redistributing land classified as non-productive and will be handed over to farmer families. The announcement was made by Agricultural Development Ministry during the fourth edition of the National Agrarian Reform Fair organized in Sao Paulo by the Landless Farmers Movement of Brazil. The authorities of this entity highlighted the role played by this movement in the struggle for agrarian reform and as a producer of food for the domestic market, overthinking of the most deprived in Brazil. 
The Agricultural Development Ministry pointed out that these measures will not only be taken, but will also include financing and technical assistance for farmers and the promotion of agricultural cooperatives. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres arrived Sunday in Jamaica for talks on the situation in Haiti. During his two-day visit, Guterres will meet with Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness. High on the agenda is what he has referred to as the extenuating crisis in Haiti. Since Kingston has assumed a leadership role as mediator on the situation in the neighboring country, the UN Secretary General hopes to channel the involvement of the international community through the Jamaican Premier. In addition, the climate issue will also be on the agenda. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will be find news, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back from the south. In Turkey, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan won in the first round with 49.51% of the votes and his party gained a majority in parliament. The Turkish head of state won the presidential elections on Sunday but without securing 50% of the votes needed to avoid a runoff. On May 28th, citizens will once again go to the polls to decide the future president of the nation. Erdogan will face opposition candidate Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, according to the preliminary results in parliament. Erdogan's People's Alliance would have 50% of the votes, meaning 325 of the 600 deputies, those maintaining its absolute majority. After the results, Erdogan highlighted the positive and democratic atmosphere of the day. At the same time, he warned about the hasty announcements of the vote recount, which is still undergoing. I also would like to extend my best regards to my brothers and sisters who voted for us, AK Party and the People's Alliance. Beyond the percentages, it is without a doubt that our nation has won this election. Our people has won this election. The Republic of Turkey is committed to the superiority of the national will, and the Republic of Turkey has once again shown that it is one of the leading democracies in the world. Erdogan also referred to the fact that the people have have opted for stability since they obtain a majority in parliament. Even in the current situation, we have seen that we have also won the majority in the parliament as the People's Alliance. So right now, People's Alliance have the majority in the parliament. And the People's Alliance also has prevailed in all the parliamentary commissions. That's why we also believe that our nation most probably will be choosing stability and also security when it comes to the presidential candidates as they have chosen the People's Alliance in the Parliament. I hope and pray that the election results will be auspicious for our country and for our people. On his part, opposition candidate Kemal Kilic Turglu expressed satisfaction with the election results. We are very happy, thanks especially to the young people we are happy about this triumph of democracy. We are waiting for the final results. Elections are not won from a balcony. We are confident we will win. 
the Party of Justice and Development is claiming victory, but we are confident that we will win these elections. Meanwhile, former Turkish presidential candidate Sinan Ogan congratulated the nation for the elections. I congratulate our nation, every Turkish citizen, for these elections and now we are waiting for the results to conduct a proper assessment. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen congratulated Turkish voters on their large turnout in the first round of the country's national elections, hailing it as a win for democracy. Um, I think the massive turnout in these elections is really good news. It's good news because it's a very clear sign that the Turkish people are committed to ex exercising their democratic rights to go and vote and that they value the democratic institutions. This is a big, big win of yesterday. In Spain's capital, Madrid, one person died and 24 others suffered smoke poisoning after a fire broke out in a hospital. The fire at the San Carlos Clinical Hospital started in the early hours of the morning local time. A 68-year-old patient died from the smoke and 17 were evacuated. 24 hours required medical attention, according to local media. The fire started in the room of the patient who died of intoxication. The investigations has only just begun. Russian artillery hit Ukrainian weapons and ammunition depots in the western center of the country. The Defense Ministry confirmed on Monday that its precision-guided weapons destroyed tanks in Ternopil and Dnipropetrovsk. Kiev amasses in those depots equipment provided by western countries. In the same operation, the Russian authorities reported more than 400 casualties in the enemy army. The Defense Ministry also confirmed the dismantling of two sabotage groups and the resistance of their forces in Artyomovsk or Bakhmut for Ukraine. The Russian government has urged the United States to complete the elimination of its remaining chemical arsenals as soon as possible. The head of the Russian delegation to a session of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, Kirill Lysogorsky, noted that 99% of the chemical weapons stockpiles declared by the convention secretary states had been verifiably destroyed and that the chemical plants for the manufacture of such agents had been dismantled. However, Washington continues to postpone the total destruction of its arsenals, even though U.S. President Joe Biden said his country was ready to complete such destruction. The United States is the only country among the signatories to the Convention on the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons that maintains an impressive stockpile of toxic agents for military use. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky held a meeting with British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak on Monday, where more military support was pledged. After his visit to Italy, Germany and France, the Ukrainian President used his social media to inform that he was continuing his European tour in London. The meeting was held at the British Premier's country residence in Chequers. The Ukrainian President arrived there in a military helicopter. After thanking each other, Zelensky assured that they would discuss very important issues of origin support to Ukraine. We have more news coming up after a final short break. Welcome back from the South. On Monday, Chinese Premier Li Qian with visiting the Eritrean President Isaias Afwerki in Beijing with both sides pledging to enhance cooperation, infrastructure and blue economy. 
The Chinese Premier said the political mutual trust between the two countries has been consolidated and cooperation has become increasingly close since the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Eritrea 30 years ago. Li added the two sides should deepen the alignment of development strategies, promote cooperation in infrastructure and other fields, cultivate new growth points of cooperation such as the blue economy, and closely cooperate in regional and international affairs. For his part, Isaias said Eritrea highly appreciates China's important contribution to maintaining world peace and opening up a new path to human modernization. The Eritrean president added his nation is willing to write a new chapter in Africa-China friendship and build a fair and just international order. In Thailand, the victory of the Move Forward opposition party seems imminent following the scrutiny of over 97% of the votes, that is, 14 million votes, which gives them 151 seats in parliament. In view of the results, the leader of the opposition party has called for a government coalition to guarantee a majority in parliament. According to the aspiring prime minister, they could secure 309 seats out of 500 in the chamber. Still, this would not be enough for him to become prime minister since his selection also involved the 250 senators elected by the former military junta. Experts agree that the government formation process will be a demanding one. Thousands of Palestinians marked May 15th as the 75th anniversary of the Nakba of 1948, when nearly 700,000 indigenous Palestinians were ethnically cleansed from their homes in historic Palestine by Zionist militias. The Nakba, an Arabic term which stands for disaster or catastrophe, was the destruction of the Palestinian society and its homeland, as it led to the permanent displacement of a majority of the Palestinian Arabs. These events are seen as the beginning of an ongoing persecution of Palestinians at hands of the Israeli state, which continues until today in Ramallah, in the center of the occupied West Bank, hundreds gather and wave flags of Palestine, black banners and keys of return to affirm the right of return of the Palestinian refugees and their offsprings to their pre-1948 homes. Participants then marched from Manada Square in downtown Ramallah, where a central rally was held commemorating the event. This date is unforgettable for us, the day when the Palestinian people living in the 1948 areas were displaced. We always try to inculcate in the minds of our children that this date is unforgettable. Hopefully, God willing, the day of Palestine's independence will also be an unforgettable one. We are here to tell the occupation, just spell them in order to make them forget about their homes. You killed their elders so they forget about their children. But here are the children taken to streets as their parents did, keeping their covenant to return one day to their land. On Monday, Palestinian mourners took part in the funeral procession of Saleh Mohammed Sabra, age 22, in Askar refugee camp east of Nablus in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian health ministry said Israeli soldiers killed Saleh Mohammed in the occupied West Bank during an Israeli attack in Nablus and that there is another Palestinian man wounded by gunfire. The Israeli army argues it just returned fire after being shot at while it was conducting an operation in Nablus to prepare for a house demolition. The incident comes after a ceasefire ended five days of fierce Israeli shelling on Gaza, which killed at least 33 Palestinians. So far this year, the conflict has claimed the lives of at least 150 Palestinians. Palestinian prisoners strike to denounce the repressive policies of the authorities in Israeli prisons. According to the Palestinian Prisoner Society, the detainees went on a one-day hunger strike as a first step in the struggle against the prison regime and in support of the demands of their fellow prisoners. The Prisoners' Emergency Committee also demanded the immediate release of cancer patient Walid Daka and called for the elimination of solitary confinement of other inmates. So far, Tel Aviv government has imprisoned more than 700 people deprived of their freedom in terrible health conditions. Sudan's most recent crisis reaches its one-month mark. Civil and human rights organizations report more than 670 deaths and 5,500 injured. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs backed the figures provided by civil and human rights organizations, adding that in the states, 
of in the states of West Kordofan and White Nile, 54 deaths were registered on May 8th. The United Nations also warned of the other crisis resulting from the clashes between the army and the rapid support forces, that is, the displacement of almost one million people from the war torn region. Kenya's President William Bruto and his main opposition figure, Raila Odinga, brought their positions closer together this weekend when they appeared together and talked to each other at two public events. After tense confrontations, which went from verbal accusations to street mobilizations promoted by Odinga and harshly regulated by the head of state, the recent understanding raises the expectation of Kenyans for a rapprochement and new ways of dialogue. The fourth major result of the easing of the positions of the president and his opponent is Raila Odinga's decision to suspend calls for more mobilizations. We have come to the end of this news brief from and you can find these and many other stories on our website, telesforenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesforenglish, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.